Hi everybody, welcome to Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. My name is Winnie from Smoke Queen Barbecue. As you know, Harry and I like to collaborate and do some fun tests together with my 500 gallon offset pit named Drogon. So today we're gonna do something really fun. Uh, we have a Japanese A5 Wagyu. His name is Shigen Haru and he's a, he was a castrated male uh, of the Wagyu breed from Japan born um, February 9th, 2017 and uh, his cattle origin is Kagoshima. And here's a certificate of authenticity and traceability. Uh, his grade is A5+. Plus. Okay, so that is the marbling and that's his nose print. So today we are lucky enough to get that um, donated by somebody, uh, anonymous donor. Um, and we are actually going to do a throwdown with an American Wagyu from Mishima Reserve. And uh, then we're going to throw that down with the Holstein um, Prime from Brant Beef. You know I love Brant Beef. All their cows are uh, raised humanely and responsibly and um, all natural without any hormones or um, antibiotics. Japanese Wagyu, I believe I looked online, is anywhere from six to eight hundred dollars just for the uh the brisket um the mishima is about two hundred dollars and the brand beef is about eighty dollars so uh we're gonna do a taste test later and we're gonna invite some friends and see what they think about it in terms of the price the taste whether it's worth it or not um so stay tuned and you will see the end results <laughs> So, as with any test, you want to have um, everything controlled, all the elements of, of um, the items controlled, and only one variable. And today, the variable is going to be the grade of meat, okay? So, we're going to put, put all three in my 500 gallon Grogon. We're going to season it plain salt, pepper, and MSG, and that's a homage to Uncle Roger. And we're gonna keep the seasoning very simple and let the meat do the talking for us. And we don't mind your MSG. So if you have any allergies to MSG, you are anti-MSG, please ignore our video. Go watch another video on YouTube. There's a lot of plenty of videos on cooking brisket. So we have the Japanese Wagyu here, and the Mishima American Wagyu. And this is the American USDA Prime. Holstein breed from Brant Beef. So we got three briskets side by side, Japanese A5 Wagyu, American uh, Wagyu, and USDA Prime, okay? First glance, these two look kind of the same. Technically, uh, this American Wagyu is a hybrid of these two, but look at this Japanese Wagyu. It looks like a piece of tuna. <laughs> Actually, no, it looks like a whole tuna. Um, it just doesn't look like a brisket. When I first got it, I was kind of confused. I, wasn't sure where's the point, where's the flat, uh, you know. It um, Right now, I'm still not sure where is the fat cap and where is the flat. But take a look at the marbling here. Insane, right? I know this is the flat, so that's probably going to taste like the point. And this is the point right here. This is all the marbling. Um, just by feeling it, there is barely any hard fat. So, um, I believe everything is edible, but I'm going to do some trimming. Um, I think this part right here is what I call the eye, which is equivalent to these two pieces of fat here, which I usually trim out. Today I'm going to trim them restaurant style. Uh, well, kind of in between restaurant and block, right? Um, I still want it to come out pretty. Um, and I want it to come out more evenly cooked. So I'm gonna make it a little bit aerodynamic. I'll collect the fat here so you can see how much I trim out. When I first started making briskets, I was very scared to trim away my money, basically. So I was very stingy in terms of trimming. But now I realize that, you know, if you don't trim some of these pieces out, especially like the, the thin pieces here, all this is not gonna be pleasurable to eat when it's done after you know 10 12 hours of cook so you end up losing that anyway so you might as well trim it out repurpose the meat for something make tallow make sausage make chili hamburgers, hamburgers. Yeah. 
So for those of you who are wondering why there's scalded meat on your brisket, it's because uh, when the uh, carcass is fabricated at the factory, at the production plant, they wash it in hot water. So the hot water will scald the meat. You can trim it off if you like. Uh, some people leave it on. I think both ways is okay. We, I like to trim it off. Weenie also likes to trim it off. It's customary for brisket to do a 45% yield. So that means a 10 pound brisket eventually will only allow you to sell about four and a half pounds of meat. That's why when you go to a barbecue restaurant, they have to charge you between $25 to $32 a pound for cooked brisket. That's the reason why there is a lot of waste and shrinkage when you cook a brisket. So I like to leave about half inch or so um, of the fat cap. Um, you know, and sometimes you go a little bit more in or a little bit out, doesn't matter. Uh, more or less, like there's no, don't go getting a ruler and measuring. So here I kind of went in a little bit uh, too far in, but you know, just kind of recover by lifting up the knife. Um, also another thing you can do is use your fingers. You need to feel what is hard. Whatever is hard is not going to render, okay? So this soft pillowy uh, fat, that's going to render and that's actually going to taste really good. So the goal is that uh, you see Winnie trimming away the fat cap. You usually want to leave about maybe about half an inch or so, so that when you finish cooking, the fat renders. And when you serve the customer, you end up with like a quarter inch sliver of fat at the end. That seems to be ideal. When I compete, I like to leave a quarter inch fat for the judges. So, so that way, you know, you don't offend any judges who don't like fat. At the same time, for those judges who are purists, who want to see a little bit of brisket fat on the winning entry, that's kind of how we do it. So it looks like the uh, a pile of uh, rubble here, about the same, right? What do you think? Huh? Almost. About the same? Almost the same? I think this one is heavier than this. Oh, this is much flatter, yeah. So for those of you who are not aware what uh, this is, this is Japanese Wagyu. The reason for this kind of a striations and marbling on the Wagyu is because of something called the Delta 9 mutation. The Japanese breeders discovered that one of their cows had this Delta 9 mutation that creates a fantastic, fantastic marbling. So they selectively bred the uh, Delta 9 mutation over time, refining the bloodline. So to today, you see the final result. These Wagyu cows actually were or origins came from England, from the Hereford series, but due to the mutation, they have this amazing, amazing marbling. So everybody in the world is now trying to replicate the Japanese, but the Japanese have a very, very sophisticated and complex breeding uh, history and tradition to be able to create uh, the bloodline that results in beef that looks like that. That's why you pay top dollar for Wagyu beef from Japan. Here's a black belt trick I learned from Harry. Put your non-dominant hand underneath the meat, lift it up with your fingers, and just slice it through. That way it's easier to just get that top layer of fat and not, and not nick the meat too much. Okay, here's a final trim that Winnie did on the uh, Wagyu. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous striation and marbling. Okay, we're going to season the brisket with a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. Traditional Texas style. A little bit of mustard smear. A little bit of uh, Jesus dust. For those of you who do not know what that is, go what, read. Uh, is it Rodney? Rodney Scott, Jesus Tears. Jesus, no, Jesus Dust. Dust or tears? Tears, I'm not sure. That. Anyway, uh, go 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 read his book if you want to know what we're doing. So this is a little secret here. For those of you who are interested to see what this is here, just a <laughs> touch of that. You can do this in a shaker bottle or you can just apply with your hand. Once you have a little bit of practice, it's not really that hard to do. Uh, Winnie's using a coarse black pepper. Usually you want to do 16 mesh. Approximately. Yeah. This is the prime, and this one is the American Wagyu. And last but not least, you know, I will probably never do a A5 Wagyu again, so I want to save the fat. all the fat. I'm going to uh, put it on a tray, lift it up on a rack, and harvest the fat for later use. Excellent. It looks beautiful. So now it's been six and a half hours. We've been running the pit on this end about 200. Um, the pit right now is actually very, very consistent, um, probably because there's not much on here. But this is at like a 210, 210, and 200. Okay, which let's is, see uh, how it looks like inside. Yeah. Drum roll. Whoa, look at that. 
that's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so that one is the... This is the Select. The, so the Walmart. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, Holstein Prime, USDA Prime. This is the Mishima uh, Reserve, Reserve American Reserve. Wagyu. And this, this is, is Japanese the Japanese Wagyu. That is yes. $800 Wagyu. They all look fantastic. Good color. You cover the edges to just minimize the burning. The yes. heat's coming from the left. So for you pit masters out there, wherever you have heat coming out, you're hitting the point, the point will tend to kind of get done first. So you want to put a piece of foil to protect it. Same Which, here. For this one, it was wow. yeah, it very, you know, I didn't want to Yeah, the colors looks really good. It looks like the cross is set, right? We always say do the scratch test. And uh, if you have a little bit of pooling here, you just tip the brisket. Kind of do a little tip and tip the liquid off. We're going to do a tallow wrap. And I think you rendered the tallow also. Yes, tallow is here. Okay. Homemade tallow. This you can buy tallow, right? But we are cheap, so we are, no, we're cost efficient. We're not cheap. We're cost efficient, so we don't need to buy tallow. But uh, if you want to make your own tallow, here's how you do it: Just put it in the pan and kind of cook it until it renders, and all that beef fat will render itself. You get some chicharrones at the end also. So this is gonna go into a warmer at uh, 275. We're gonna run it about two hours, 15 to 20, and then after that we're gonna give it a long rest at around 140 degrees to achieve brisket perfection. And we're gonna go preheat to 275, run it for about two hours, and then we're gonna do a hold on it. And if you're like Pitmaster Winnie, you got one of these 3,000 or 4,000 dollar units, what is this? Really expensive units. Definitely need this to cook briskets here. All right, and we're gonna put it in. And we just automate it. Mechanism, super easy to use. The briskets in, so we got four briskets to test. The Walmart ones are gonna be on the top because okay. it's the biggest one. All right. I put the Wagyu in the middle because the, Amer uh, the Japanese Wagyu because, you know. It's very delicate, so yes. we've got to check it, right? Okay. All right, preheating and put these puppies to rest. Here we go. So I'm gonna cook it at 275 and then I'm going to hold it at 145 and the timer will be at one and a half hours after that so it means that um, it will cook at 275 for one and a half hours and after that it will automatically go down to 145 which is my holding temperature so i normally do about two hours or so and that's usually with a cabinet full of briskets um, so since i don't have that many briskets today i just want to check it at one and a half hours um, i don't want to overcook the the japanese wagyu so i want to play it safe if at one and a half hours I feel that it needs a little bit more time, I can just add another 30 minutes to it. And then how long are you going to hold this thing? Six, I'm going to hold 12, it 15, 15. 12 to 15 hours. Uh, actually, what I do is take it out at 9 a.m., um, let let it cool down a little bit um, more, because at that time it'll be at 145. Um, you don't want to slice at 145. I feel like uh, all the juice will still spew out. Um, so I like to slice when you can touch it with your hand so when it's not too hot but when it's still warm to the touch so about one hour coming out to rest mm -hmm. to take it down from 145 down to maybe about 100 or so yes yes okay yes. all right you heard it folks pitmaster winnie's secret method to fantastic brisket so there you go a hold time is important a rest time after hold is also important the uh 800 one you yeah like, this is walmart this one is an American Wagyu, so uh, no expense was spared for your eating pleasure today. Yes. So uh, for those of you Ajou, who, uh, who yeah. never heard about uh, this thing, so this is an oleic acid and the reason that the Wagyu is so amazing is because of a mutation in the genetics of the cow. This is super, cooked perfectly, is so tender, like nothing is shredding, <laughs> there's no burnt parts. <laughs> Right, let's cut the second one up. But I'm gonna cut out a Walmart one now. Jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. All right, very jiggly. Look at that a little nice jiggle to the meat here. How juicy this is. See that? Look at that. You see the juiciness of the fat. And this is the Walmart cheap brisket. Okay, so there's two muscles. The the brisket muscle is comprised of pectoralis minor, pectoralis major, which is the chest muscle, point and the flat. Right, so these are Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles on a cow, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles. And don't worry about the grade, just taste it for what you like. The point is always more fatty. The flat is less first? fatty. 
No, you, you, it's up to you. You decide. You think can I can use the pen? And oh yeah, write? yeah. You can write. You can write. Yeah, of course, on the pen. We need some more pens. And then, uh, if you can text the the what do you call your results to Winnie and me, we will tabulate the results and make this highly unscientific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So number one was I'm sure you guys guessed it. Um, the Walmart brisket. Number two uh, was <laughs> the Prime. Alright. Number three. The Japanese Wagyu. Eight hundred dollar brisket. Yes. Number three. Number Everybody knew that. Number four is the American Wagyu. I had that right. The timing's gonna give you the score. So it's actually really close. One, two, three, four. Okay. Number one got twenty-seven point eight points. Twenty-seven point eight. And then number two got thirty point one. Okay. Number three got thirty-five point nine. Okay. And number four got 31.8. Exactly how I would have thought of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's psychic. Wow. Right. It's different, for sure. The texture is completely different. So it's yeah. not a fair comparison. It's yeah. like taking a Lamborghini against the Maya. When I know? tasted the fat, yeah. I, I was totally th thrown off. I was like, what yeah, is this? It's oleic acid. Different. It's oleic acid. Mm -hmm. That's how the oleic, acid, the oleic acid tastes like. Very different on the A5. It's a super mouthfeel. It's very unctuous. I've only heard about that on other YouTube videos where they talk about A5 mm. fat. Mm. Yeah. And I've never understood it and now I kind of really understand it. Yeah, so the scores are, are reflective of, you know, overall. Yeah. So Walmart was a 27.8, the brand Prime 30, Japanese Wagyu about 36 and then 32 on the Mishima. So uh, there you go, folks. Winnie has written the pricing down. So the Walmart brisket is $60, 18 pounds, 298 a pound. The Brent Prime is three eighty a pound for fifty five dollars. The Japanese Wagyu is eight hundred dollars for this is sixty three dollars a pound, and the Mishima Reserve American Wagyu is about twelve fifty a pound. Two hundred dollar brisket. So two hundred dollar brisket, eight hundred dollar briskets, fifty five dollar brisket, and sixty dollar brisket. So your mileage will vary, but when you buy briskets, uh, be aware that you know sometimes you pay a lot of money, but you may not get uh, you know ten times the flavor improvement. But this will give you a very, very good guide on the kind of money you want to spend on your friends and your family. Yeah. What would you buy? Yeah. I'm going to do the Prime as well. I think um, the fat sometimes can get a little too much. Too much. Okay, yeah. so for, Prime. For my personal taste. For your personal So, so say 55 bucks is a good deal, right? Good on the Prime. Deal, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm going to go with number three. Um, I don't like a lot of fatty meat. So that one was had less fat to me, so I'm gonna go with number three. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> All right, Winnie, what do you think? Uh, I would do the American Wagyu. I think uh, it's a little bit more um, when you're okay. So when you are smoking for your family, right? It's cheaper than going out and buying a whole brisket cooked. So I would just do the American Wagyu. Just American because Wagyu. Because it's a little bit uh, better. Okay. What, do, what do you want? I would do the Prime because prime. You, know, you get the best bang for your buck. It's only fifty-five bucks, and it's almost. Uh, almost comparable to the American Wagyu. You yeah. can see the scores, yeah. yeah. Okay, so everybody decides they, they want to try different uh, combinations. Uh, my choice is uh, I'm cheap, so I would go for the Prime. Right? At, at, six, at $55, this is really good. If I were competing, uh, I don't know if I would spend $800 in a contest. Because if first place brisket is not $800, right? That's taking a huge risk. Unless it was a $10,000, $50,000 grand championship. And you throw in this this uh, brisket here, but you know the Mishima is very good. So actually, for competition, I'm actually torn between the two hundred dollar and the eight hundred dollar. Mm. For competition, I would not use the Walmart nor the Prime, but for eating at home, serving my friends and family, hard to beat three dollars and eighty cents a pound, right? Oh yeah, so I would say if it's like a big group, I'd go Prime, and if it's like a smaller intimate, then yes, the American Wagyu. Okay. Stole my answer. Yeah, and then you are a financial person, so you know numbers. <laughs> yes, I did it all. On just now for us and yes I used to be a finance director so it's all there. So what would you buy for your family? For my family it's definitely the American Wagyu. Uh, it, it depends how much you love them uh, but definitely the, the American Wagyu. Um, for one person, if I was just going on a date or something, number three, the Japanese three. Wagyu. All right. But for everybody else, number one. So for all the single women out there watching this episode, please go check him out on Instagram. He's uh, going to cook you a $800 piece of it? meat JG as a uh, first date. First date, right? First date? First date? First date? Hey, hey, no, no I, I'm, I have a girlfriend. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. sorry, everybody. All right, sorry. Sorry, he's off, he's off market. So forget what I said. Uh, guys, Mr. Beans is going to get a chance to try Winnie's special brisket here and uh, we'll see which one he likes better. I arranged the four samples at random. 
uh, the uh, Wagyu is uh, the one on the this side here. So beans, give it a shot here. Which one you like? Okay. Oh no, he went for the Wagyu first. Dang it. And he went for the Angus. And that was the other American Prime. And then he went, <laughs> my Walmart is last place. So there you go. That's what happens. Mr. Beans knows his way around brisket. And he has a whis brisket whisperer here. Thanks for stopping by, joining this episode. Hope you guys found this useful. Huge thanks to Pitmaster Winnie for offering us to use Bragon. Thanks to all the guests who stopped by today to watch this episode and be our taste testers. All right. So until the next video, please be safe. We'll see you guys in the next one.